Yeah, Mozart is somebody that takes you from the hand and goes with you in good times, in not so good times, but always brings you into the light. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, what is your personal approach to Mozart, to Mozart music? How it touches your soul? <laughs> Mozart is, uh, he has become one of my best friends and I say it very honestly and I think every artist that has this special relationship with Mozart says the same thing. Ever since 2010 actually when I read for the first time the letters of Mozart, I really fell in love with the man, not only with the genius composer but with the man. Uh, Mozart was uh, my very first composer as a young singer, I sang Il Re Pastore. That was the very first uh, opera that I sang. And in fact, it was, we know somebody, Hector Sandoval, a tenor Mexican colleague. He was supposed to sing Alessandro in Il Re Pastore. And then he left to Vienna to sing, um, to sing some auditions. And because he left, I had just arrived to the conservatorio and the teacher told me, you will sing Alessandro. And I had to learn it in a couple of days and I sang my very first opera was Il Repastore, the last opera that Mozart composed for Salzburg. So Mozart is really a source of light, a source of, of joy, a source of um, uh, being together with somebody full of love and full of wonderful messages. So he touches your soul? Yeah, he touches everybody's soul <laughs> and not only my soul, he touches my, my intellect, he touches my inspiration, he inspires me and uh, yeah, Mozart is somebody that takes you from the hand and goes with you in good times, in not so good times, but always brings you into the light. How is your approach for being a director here from the Mozart weeks or how you... Um continue the spirit of Mozart. Well, it, that's exactly what, what I, and I think we all here in the Mozarteum Foundation want to do, is to bring not only Mozart's music in the best quality, but also the essence of who Mozart is and was, of course, and why it is important to listen to Mozart and to know the story of Mozart, because that is exactly the vocation of the Mozarteum uh, Foundation, uh, to talk about the, the letters, to talk about the biography of Mozart, who he was, and particularly being here in Salzburg, the city, of course, where Mozart was born. Um, the Mozart week has a very special energy in itself. You can feel all these great musicians playing Mozart with a different type of um, emotion, I think. And that comes by being here, by feeling the presence of Mozart. And I think that is what is, makes special the, the Mozart week. Nice. Do you think there's a one Mozart recording? Like the Mozart recording? No, I think Fortunately, there's many approaches to Mozart's music. I think there's many readings of Mozart's music, and I think that is wonderful because there is a Mozart for everybody. There's Mozart um, with original instruments. There is Mozart with modern instruments, and of course, with so many readings from so many extraordinary conductors. And of course, um, one great uh, conductor, one of the absolute legend conductors, uh, Herbert von Karajan and, and Mozart have a special history and so it is wonderful to have all these readings and when they come from extraordinary masters like Herbert von Karajan there is something new to discover, there is something extraordinary to find out in the same pieces. In that sense Mozart remains always new and relevant. How is your approach to Karajan? Did you listen to the recordings? Or I do listen a lot to Herbert von, I mean, one must listen to <laughs> Herbert von Karajan, absolutely. And I, I have a very uh, distinctive memory of the, the day that he passed away because I was in Mexico and um, I was opening the, the newspaper and then there it was. I saw the news and I went, oh, wow. And, and to be honest, at that time, I was maybe not so much into the big repertoire of classical music, but even me that was at that point relatively ignorant uh, or unknown, I mean, I didn't have the knowledge of classical music, that name meant something. And I had goosebumps when I saw this, like, 
one of the great, great, absolute great ones, one of the definite ones, is not anymore with us. And so that, that feeling is quite strong, quite um, impressive. That gives you the sense of what an important person for what we do uh, he was. I mean, Karajan conducted a lot of sacred music also for Mozart. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I mean, if, I think one of the very last things was uh, uh, a mass by, by Mozart, where actually our uh, adore Cecilia Bartoli, a very, very young Cecilia Bartoli, um, um, auditioned for him in these very last times. And so, obviously, the interpretations of, of Karajan, not only Mozart, whatever he performs, of course, there are some where he's more of a reference, um, but anything that he touches is something that we all have to listen and we all have to experience there's something to learn in anything one can i mean i to, to hear the clarinet concert uh, conducted by karayan this second movement i mean i don't know i think there is an anecdote worth him telling the soloist you shouldn't be playing it here you should be playing it there in a, on top of the philharmonie because you will be closer to God, which is where one needs to be playing this movement. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, Böhm is known as the best Mozart conductor. That's a very personal um, yeah. question. But do you think Böhm is the better conductor than Karajan? I mean, for example, Zauberflöte Overture? To be honest, I, I don't like to think on uh, first place, second place, third place of um, of interpretations of Mozart in any direction, not as singers, not as performance. There is in art two ways of, um, of uh, analyzing or criticizing a performance and a piece. And one is objective and a big part of it is subjective. Objective is, is there everything in there technically that has to be in order to consider that a good performance? If yes, then period, it is a good performance. Then comes the subjectivity. Do I like it or not and why? But that we, we need to forget next to the objective. So Böhm or Karajan, we're talking about great conductors, but then you have Hanokur and then you have Barenboim and then you have, and then you name them. I mean, who is better? I cannot name who's better. To me, they're all, I mean, today, young conductors like Robin Ticciati is, is doing great things, Mark Minkowski. So there are different readings and interpretations. Which one is better? I don't care. For, I love them all. I learn from them all. I, all of them have something to tell me. And so in, th in that sense, how lucky we are to have this richness of performances, of recordings that we can learn. And, but learn maybe is a big word that we can just enjoy and fill our souls with these wonderful interpretations. Your favorite Mozart piece. <laughs> Ah, I, I cannot name one. I have many <laughs> favorite Mozart pieces. I mean, I mentioned one, the clarinet concert, of course. Uh, I can think of the little uh, G minor symphony, uh, symphony 25 and 29, both. I, I love them. Of course, the three last symphonies, uh, the, the, the piano concert 17, the 21, the 27. I mean, it, you name them. I, I really love all, all the Da Ponte operas, I love, it's, I cannot, I mean, Lieder von, I mean, uh, von, von Mozart and the Kama music, I mean, the quintets are just only, I mean, they were revolutionary in themselves, but then the sonata, the, the piano, really, it's so hard. I have, I have many, many favorites, the sonata from Paris, the piano sonata from Paris, uh, uh, the minor, the minor works are quite special. All the minor works have, it was, uh, have, it was, have something <laughs> quite special to say because he, he wrote very few of them, almost 35 from the 626. Um, and so th they are very special. I think all of them have something um, very interesting and very particular about his ideas and what he had in mind. So all of the question, Mozart helped you to become an opera singer, I guess? Uh, no, I think Mozart helped me to become an artist more than an, um, an opera singer, because when I first sang him, honestly, I was more worried about how I put my voice in this music. I was not very conscious of the genius I was interpreting, I was performing. And so um, 
when I really discovered him, when I really got in touch with him in 2010, there I was ready to not only sing Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, but to understand what Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's music is and what it means to sing it. And that comes also from reading the letters, from hearing from his own voice what he wants from a singer. And he wants not only a great actor, not only a great interpreter, a great performer, but he wants an amazing musician, somebody that blends with the orchestra. You are a part of the orchestra. And this incredibly difficult balance between acting and yet being a musical instrument for his music is really, it is, it is a challenge for every singer. So it's there where uh, Mozart invited me to be an artist more than a singer. Great words. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank we you. bang, bing, bong. Great questions, Dankeschön. <laughs>